бокс там какой-нибудь, типа там. Туда напрямую воткнем.
welcome you this afternoon to the 25th graduation ceremony of Hinkson Christian Academy. We are glad that you can join us to celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2019. I have asked Mr. Nathan Ford to lead us in the invocation. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for every day that you give us. Lord, I thank you for the time we've had together, the years that we've had together, just the growth, the journey that you've taken us on, and the journey that you have before us. We ask your blessing today and on the future. We come before you in humility and gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
this time, I would like to invite up our salutatorian, Ms. Colleen, to deliver her speech. After years and years of seeing past salutatorians and valedictorians give their speeches, it almost seems surreal that I am up here giving mine in 2019. They seem so majestic, ready to jump into adulthood. And I am this grown little girl trying to not let her shaking voice be heard. When I received the message that I would be giving the salutatorian speech, I initially had two reactions. One, wow, I've made it. And two, damn, what am I supposed to talk about? So I thought and thought and thought. And in those thoughts, my classmates were always in the center. I remember second grade when I barely knew the alphabet and basically survived thanks to my intuition and the kindness of my classmates. In third grade, I learned how to write in person and actually communicate in English. Fourth grade was all about the guinea pigs that we had for our class pet. Fifth grade was blessed by Mr. Hayes, who was a friend and a father to us. Sixth grade was a scary entrance into middle school. Seventh and eighth grade, puberty. Ninth grade was an explosion of projects, essays, and homework. Tenth grade was getting the hang of being a high school student. Junior year was the busiest I've ever been in my life at Houston, and that's probably the same for my classmates too. In senior year, enjoying and cherishing our last moments as a class of 2019. In those 11 years, I was able to thrive and be myself because of the teachers and friends who have inspired me and given me strength to go on. All of my classmates, those who have come and left, and those who have stayed to the very end, have shown me what it means to love and be loved, to be a family. That does not mean we only display the good side of ourselves. In fact, we see so many aspects of each other, both likable and unlikable, and despite all the conflicts, misunderstandings, hurt feelings, we've put up with each other. We finished this race together, holding hands. It is crazy to think that we have to say goodbye now. We spent so much time together that it's almost impossible to imagine days without seeing each other. But this is not going to be our last goodbye. In Korean, both hello and goodbye are the same word, annyeong. Just like annyeong, we may mean to say either hello or goodbye. So we'll say goodbye to each other for part of our ways. We'll say hello to our future. And we'll say hello to all our memories every time we think of each other. Class of 2019, this is not our final goodbye. We have created memories that could be made only by us. We dwell on each other's memories and we will reminisce about our shared moments. We will be saying goodbye and hello to our past, present, and future. So let me say this once again, Class of 2019, I'm young.
at this time, if the choir can join us as well, we have another piece for you.
Greetings, faculty, administration, friends, family, my fellow graduates, and Sophia, who may be oh, who may or not be watching us graduate from far away. Guess what? We survived. <laughs> there were so many times when we doubted if we could make it to the next day. But here we are, all in one piece. I'm honored and privileged to stand here and give a speech. I thought writing a speech was going to be easy, but I was wrong. While trying to write something, I realized how untalented I was at doing this, and once again, I doubted um, my survival. There were a lot of things in my mind when I was writing, perhaps a few too many things. I wanted to give thanks to my family, especially my parents, who went through the trouble of raising me, and every single individual teacher and acquaintance who shaped and taught me. I wanted to give advice to my younger schoolmates who, I noticed, were looking at us with jealousy rather than relief, because we are getting out of school and they're not. The truth is, the childhood youth is a gift, and I wish I could have enjoyed it more when I had the chance. But then, I was feeling bad because I knew I would never do justice to the speech. I have never played Foursquare the entire school year. Shame on me. I realized this speech was not about me, because really it is by the grace of God that I am even standing here alive. This speech is about you guys, class of 2019. That just sounds so weird. I never thought I'd actually graduate. It took me a while to realize that I, what I really wanted to say is this. Though I must admit, there are more than more times when I wanted to strangle you guys than cuddle with you. I love you, every single one of you. With you, I learned what a real family was. Though it included more than enough quarrels, but what can you expect from a bunch of lions who like to war? It also included always being there for each other giving moral support, having deep conversations about anything and everything, and being connected with each other at the end of the day. I know I was not the best family member. I wish I had. Though I always said I won't miss you guys, and I almost thought I really wouldn't, I realized that you guys were the true blessing I had, and know that you will be missed dearly by me and by each other. Alfred. I'll forevermore admire your creative use of SAT words in all sorts of circumstances. I won't even try mimicking you. Jenna, your persistence in everything impresses me up until today, despite the fact that we hung out around together quite a lot of time. Dallin, thanks for being like my sister and taking care of me more than I did for myself. Josh, you're like a brother. At times you could be very annoying. But you also inspire me to not get lazy. Thanks. Yeah. Helen, thanks for being an awesome body for Russian class and memorizing lines for the play. Всегда говорят, нет права на земле, но правда нет и выше. Для меня по это ясно, как простая гамма. Daria, I admired your friend making skills and I'm glad that we are friends. Anna, Egypt, Totem. I'm glad I was on your team for basketball. You're really scary out there. <laughs> Hannah, I'll never forget your dazzling, beautiful smile and your lovely singing. And Sophia, thanks for really believing in me and encouraging me to write my novel even when I doubted in myself. I love you all and I know we'll do great out there, wherever it is. Thank you.
Penny and I have watched most of you for the last 19 years. We have seen you transition from kids into teenagers, and now in the beginning of your adult journey. Your class is small, but it's very close. You know each other really well. You get along with each other most of the time. I've seen you learn from your mistakes and generally make wise decisions. The last few months have been challenging for you in some ways as a class. During these challenges, I try to often remind Anna, God is getting you ready to leave. Like a mother bird teaching her baby birds to fly, God is making it uncomfortable for you to stay in the nest any longer. A baby bird is not certain that it can actually fly until a mama bird pushes it out and forces it into the air. The baby bird has no choice but to then fly. Likewise, graduation is a time for you to move on to the next phase of your life. Please hear my words. With God's help, you are ready to fly. When Mr. Jones asked me to speak at your graduation, I thought to myself, what is the most important thing for a graduation message? Keep it short, came to mind, and I'll try. Graduation messages are filled with advice for the graduates. This advice for your life is usually based on the opinions of the wise speaker. Sometimes these opinions are good, often they are not, and almost always the words are completely forgotten before the graduates even collect their diplomas. So what can I share with you today that is true, valuable, and not merely my opinion, but will be long-lasting for you? And I simply have four words for you. Listen carefully. Jesus Christ is Lord. That's the most important thing I can mean with you. This phrase was likely the very first profession of faith that followers of Jesus stated in the world. It separated believers in Jesus from everyone else. Because of this phrase, many people were persecuted and even killed. And many today still are. Jesus Christ is Lord is a simple phrase, but what does it really mean? The first word, Jesus, this word means God saves. It answers the most important question in our lives. We are not holy. We are not God. Whether we acknowledge it or not, we are tenacious rebels who actively fight against the rule of God in our lives. This is the meaning of sin. We are sinners. Scripture says that the penalty we all must pay for our sin is severe and total. It is death. Our rebellion against God demands our blood. We are incapable of paying this penalty and yet staying alive. So, who can save us? God can. Thus, truly, God saves. This is what the word Jesus reminds us of. The second word, Christ, means the anointed one. That is the one who was set aside for a purpose. Jesus was the Christ. Anointed, set aside for the purpose of paying for our penalty. Your penalty and mine. The prophet John, the prophet, the prophet John saw Jesus and declared, Here is the sacrificial lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Simply put, Jesus was anointed to die in our place, even though he never deserved to die. We adore him, we love him, because he willingly, voluntarily died so that we would not have to. Jesus is the Christ. The last word, Lord, this word means that Jesus is sovereign or king. In English, we have lost much of the meaning of this word. When we think of the sovereign, like the sovereign of England, we think of Queen Elizabeth, who everybody likes because she appears to be a kind, grandmotherly type figure who doesn't frighten anyone because really she has no power. But Jesus is not this type of monarch. No, Jesus is God. Frighteningly powerful, but constant, sure, and self-constrained. Jesus is God. Frighteningly powerful, but constant, sure. Jesus created the universe by simply speaking it into existence, and he keeps it together by his power. 
Jesus not only defeated Satan when he rose from the grave, he completely humiliated Satan for all time in doing so. C.S. Lewis famously described Jesus as a lion, ferociously untamed, but yet still very, very good. Jesus deserves our respect because of his terrifyingly great power. Jesus is Lord. There are lots of different ways to say this phrase, Jesus is Lord. The Apostle Paul, who was one of those who was murdered for affirming the truth of this phrase, Jesus is Lord, put it this way when he reminded the early church of what was the most important. He said to them, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day. And then he appeared to over 500 brothers and sisters at one time. Jesus was saying, uh, Paul was saying, Jesus Christ is Lord. The actual words may be different, but the truth is the same. Throughout your life, from here on out, you will face many responses to the simple and powerful statement, Jesus Christ is Lord. If you believe this truth, some people will ignore you. Some people will silence you. Some people will mock you. Some people will argue with you. Some people might try to kill you. And they may even succeed. It could well be that you yourself ignore, silence, mock, or argue with this truth that Jesus is Lord. The simple part of reality is that this statement, Jesus Christ is Lord, can help us only when we personally embrace it in our lifetime. Like any perishable object, object say cheese, bread, or bottled milk, each of us has an expiration date. When we are young, it's easy to overlook the fact that one day we will all die. But it is almost certain to happen to all of us, even the class of 2019. At that point, God no longer permits us to change our minds. Scripture is clear. We are either immediately received in heaven with Jesus, or we are justly banished apart from God in hell. So all of us have a finite amount of time to decide whether we acknowledge this truth or not. This truth, Jesus Christ as Lord, can change your life to be unbelievably rich and fulfilling. It can give you wisdom and peace, courage and joy. Wherever you go, ponder this claim. Jesus Christ is Lord. I have a weak and distracted mind. I often forget things. And it's not just because I'm getting older. It's because I'm a human. You probably find the same thing with you too. As a result, even after 33 years of following Jesus, I often need to repeat this truth, Jesus Christ is Lord, to myself. I can never afford to forget this. Wherever you go now, whatever you do, I urge you, to get involved with a healthy, biblical local church where you can be reminded that Jesus Christ is Lord often. In a local church, you can continue to explore all that that phrase means. Being a member in a local church is God's primary way to remind us of this truth. So please, from Miss Penny and from me, please find a good church wherever you go. Don't ignore that. Finally, as you graduate, Please know that you have made pennies in my life much richer over the years. We have thoroughly and thoroughly enjoyed and loved each one of you. Jenna, Alfred, Donald, Joshua, Ellen, Mary, Dari, Anna, Hannah. We will miss you deeply, but we are excited that you're ready to go to the next season of your lives. I want to close by speaking a famous blessing over you. In the name of Jesus, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We love you.
award medals to three of our seniors. This year, in addition to our usual award of medals for salutatorian and valedictorian, we have added an additional award. Any student who has been with us since either kindergarten or first grade will be awarded the title of Golden Graduate. This year, we have one student who will receive this honor. So first of all, Golden Graduate, Darius
Ellen also plans to study at the Higher School of Economics in Moscow or move back to Korea.
now. We ask your blessings. We ask your anointing on these seniors. The class of 2019. Father, we pray that you would anoint them with your spirit, anoint them with power, that they would go forth, that they would be a blessing unto others. Father, we pray for wisdom. We pray for guidance. We pray for vision. Father, we pray that you would use them to bring honor and glory to your kingdom. We ask all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Everyone is then welcome to join us for the graduation reception in the adjoining. 